Okay, so as you may have seen for some other videos, um, my Howl house is pretty much wired up with um, a series of light bulbs and um, LED strips that are controlled via um, a system called MyLight. Uh, in some countries it's called MyLight, some it's called Easy Bulb, some it's called uh, Limitless LED. So this is the piece of equipment that connects to the light bulbs. So let's just uh, focus on that. So what it is, is um, this connects to your network. Um, it's powered via a micro USB. It's just a reset hole there. And um, what it does is it connects wirelessly to your network and then uh, when it receives a series of UDP packets, it will um, communicate with the, the individual light bulbs over a different frequency and turn them on, off, change their color or brightness. Now, that would be all well and good, but these things are flaky as hell. They're, um, you know, Chinese made or something and they, they just don't work very well. They're very, very touchy about staying on the network. So um, what I have currently, um, this is a spare one I've got here. Um, my, my main one is powered. Um, it's just 5.5 volts. So I've got my Arduino powering it and um, a Wi-Fi shield on the Arduino. It pings this device here. Whenever it, it stops um, responding to a ping, um, the Arduino cuts the power and then reapplies the power again um, using a uh, MOSFET. <clears throat> so it essentially resets the bridge. So the, the issue of it dropping off the network isn't solved as such, but it means that I don't have to manually restart it. Um, I'm looking to fix that. So I found through Twitter, I was speaking to someone, I've got an app called Home Remote that controls all these. And I was speaking to a guy um, who uses my app and he was saying about how his uh, wireless bridge is also flaky and that he'd seen someone essentially take out the wireless hardware from this and go via a Raspberry Pi, either connected to um, Ethernet or via Wi-Fi itself. So I'm probably going to go Ethernet because... Uh, the less there is to go wrong, the better, really. So, <clears throat> um, there's a web page. I'm going to link to it. Um, it will just be uh, there'll be like a URL or something along here. If I can't work out how to do that, it will be in the description. Okay. So, um, let's start. So, the first step is to open this up. So, there's no um, visible screw holes. I felt underneath uh, underneath the label, and the the label isn't covering any screw holes. So, it's just going to be a case of um, prying it open with a screwdriver. You can see there's already a gap here because I've done this one. Um, you just push the screwdriver into the gap and lift it up and you'll see there's just like some friction friction lock in there to stop it um, to stop it popping out. So it, it's now popped past the friction lock point and you can just get the screwdriver in and open it up. Now you'll see there's actually very very little in here. So obviously just a piece of plastic, we'll get rid of that. <coughs> On the other side of this, we can get rid of that. That's dead now. So what we have here is um, a circuit board, obviously, and nothing on that side. So um, what we've got is you've got your micro USB connector here, the reset switch is here. I'm not very uh, technological from an electrical point of view, so. Um, excuse my my very basic descriptions here now this here is the wi-fi module let's just focus in on that um there's nothing visibly to give it away but i've seen from the page that i will have linked to earlier or that's in the description that this is the wi-fi module so we essentially need to remove this device from this main board here so <clears throat> on on the green board somewhere is pretty much the um the green board is the what we're interested in. So what we need to do is we need to remove this piece here and via the pins that this connects to the green board, use the Raspberry Pi to um, send the data instead. So um, as I say, I'm not good enough electronically to understand this stuff, but the person on the page has um, been great. To be fair, he's uh, explained everything quite clearly. I understand the concept, I understand how it works now, but I just, I couldn't have got there myself. So, um, first thing I'm gonna do is, if we look here, we've got, you can see the only thing that's sold on here really are these these pins. And I'm just gonna 
um, go and unsolder them all now and once I've got them disconnected I will come back to um, this board when everything's disconnected okay so here we have our um, main board with the Wi-Fi bridge part of it removed you can see it wasn't super clean to be fair I say removed it wasn't massively unsoldered it was more sort of a bit of bend, bending and then some cleaning up so Here's the Wi-Fi bridge module. It did not survive the um, the removal. I couldn't do anything with it anyways, to be fair. So that's that's dead. It's been in the bin. Right, so <clears throat> the pins we are interested in are number one, number two, and number six. This is number one, that is number two, and then three, four, five, six. Okay, so the first um, two um, is the ground basically so that's going to be our, our ground coming out of our pi um, and pin one on the raspberry pi sorry pin six on the raspberry pi is going to go to pin one on the um wireless on, on the on the main board um, pin two on the main board is going to go to um, pin one on the pi which is going to be our 3.3 .3 volts and then um this is where the magic happens. Pin number six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be coming to um, pin number eight on the Pi. And that is going to be the input, the data input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some, I've just got some fish um, wires here. And I'm going to um, wire it up to the main board. So I'm going to be using, obviously, um, I've only got blue, red and yellow, so I'm going to be doing blue to ground on pin 1, red to um, the 3.3 .3 volts on pin 2, and then yellow to pin 6. Um, and then I will show you what's going on with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so here we have our cables now connected to pins number 1, number 2 and number 6. So what we're going to do, we're now going to move over to the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> Here it is, it's a great machine, it's absolutely fantastic. So um, the pins we were interested in, I think were one, two, uh, sorry, one, six and eight. So um, you might just be able to see here, this one here, this is pin one. And it goes one, two, three, four, five six seven eight so we're interested in number one number six and number eight so i don't have any little header connectors or anything at the moment and this is going to be like my one time use for the raspberry pi here so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to solder my cables directly to the pins um i really wouldn't recommend that to be fair you know um you want to be able to use your Raspberry Pi for other stuff. And I, I can always unsolder it. It's not going to be the end of the world. But um, just for the purposes of getting this running tonight, while I've got some time, I'm going to be soldering it direct to um, the board. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'll come back and we'll discuss uh, the software that's running on it. Okay, so here's our fully assembled, um, so fully assembled, roughly fully assembled, um setup so what we're going to do now is on the page i linked to earlier um i'll link to it again just up here um or in the description if i can't work out how to do that um it's going to be a few python scripts that we need to run so for it to show up essentially as um you know to have to be able to receive the the correct um to handle the udp packets and, and perform the correct procedure um sending data down into this so I'm just going to use a standard um, I'm really bad for my Raspberry Pi stuff just whatever setup you fancy is the one I'm going to I'm going to just be using the basic stuff it comes with and then just running the Python scripts on that so um, I'm going to mess around with the software now on the Raspberry Pi and give it a little test and once I've got it up and running I'll come back and explain um, what I found out okay so this is um so my monitor is currently like picture in picture so um, the Raspberry Pi is outputting to HDMI in the top right of the image. Um, you can see the MyLight images there, uh, the MyLight LED strips there and there. Um, so I've actually just got to download and install um, Raspbian to 
the Raspberry Pi here, which is all hooked up. It's all mess of cables and crappy keyboards. But um, there you go, that's that's the setup at the moment. Um, one thing I would say, when I was soldering, it helped to uh, tin the wires first. Um, it just means applying a little bit of solder to each each wire and then touching on. And if you do ever get like a need a helping hand, these little guys here, it's got like a magnifying glass on it so you can whoa, see through. Um, and they hold the circuit boards for you and stuff, which is, is really good. So I'm going to um, come back to you once the Raspberry Pi is up and running. And I'll see you in a minute. So something really interesting just happened. Um, the Raspberry Pi just booted up for the first time. You can see it there. And um, my light here went off and the lights in the living room just went blue. And that's because the Raspberry Pi dumps its console to the um, pin number eight. So when it starts up, it sent a load of shit to the Wi-Fi bridge, which reacted and did something crazy, like changing all the lights and everything. So um, it's actually working. It's showing up on um, the network already as the Wi-Fi bridge, although obviously there needs to be more done to it than just that. So um, I'm gonna just set up the Raspberry Pi and get the other command stuff working and then um, start sending data to the Raspberry Pi and see what happens. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got the Raspberry Pi running the LED Python script. It's um, it's linked on the page that I'm linking to that will be up uh, here when I can do it or down in the description down there. Um, so I'm using my phone's home remote app at this time and I can do study off and study bright and they're both using the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So it's all working, which is awesome. So um, there's still a bit of tidying up to do. Uh, I need to just, uh, you know, sort the case out, cut some holes for these cables to come through and then attach the main board to the case somehow. And then just stash it behind all that crap over there. Um, Iron Man. So yeah, you know, it's all worked. I'm pretty pleased. It means that I'm going to have some flawless my light connectivity and I can start getting my network back to normal because uh, you know my Apple TV always kick this thing off so I can start just having everything always on which would be awesome. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it helps some people. Um, always check out Home Remote app as well, it allows you to do some amazing things with my light around your home. Um, it's got iBeacon support so you can turn lights on and off as you enter rooms and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, bye.